So the uh, next panel is about uh, Internet of Things, um, um, specially focused on mobile services for Internet of Things. Uh, to lead us through the panel, uh, please welcome John Malloy. John is the founding partner of Blue Run Ventures, and John invests in early stage companies. Uh, some of his successful companies include PayPal and Waze. And to lead us through the uh, panel, John. Afternoon. Happy Friday afternoon. How many people in this room think the Internet of Things is going to be the next big opportunity in your business? I do. I got, okay. You guys do? All right, I got two of them. <laughs> How many people in this room are confused about what the heck the Internet of Things is? All right. <laughs> well, we've got some experts here who are hopefully going to be able to help us out. So first, let's start with Flavia. I'll let you guys sort of give your backgrounds as you answer the question, but Flavio is with Cisco, and Cisco is running these great ads that are starting to, and IBM is doing the same thing. GE is doing the same and thing. And GE is doing the same thing. And they're showing this wonderful future. Is that the Internet of Things? <coughs> Aspects of it. I, I believe that this is a transition that will take many years. Maybe next 30 years or more, we'll, we'll be busy doing it, understanding what it is, understanding its impact developing the technologies that we are missing, finding new verticals and new use cases. Uh, the basic story is every multi multiple verticals are at the same time are coming together in the need for a more uh, standard networking. The networking we use in the, in the enterprise, in the service provider space and so on to tie together machines, sensors, to tie together their users, to make uh, their, their uh, working more efficient, to solve problems of movement of data. Big data is a big thing. So uh, the funny thing is there's pain points of such a magnitude that need to be solved. And when you see Shell crying because they are not able to move their data from the platform out in Thailand, out to their data centers and they need that and they don't want to miss one bit of that data. When you see that pain, you realize that there's something big happening here. When you look at the development of, of software for controlling of cars, it's a mess. Is the long pole in the development of automotive. Why? Because the internal architecture of the car needs redesign, redefinition and so forth. And this is affecting all our lives. When you see the uh, energy network that is not able to adapt to the flexibility needed to move data ba uh, energy back and forth, to control it in a more hierarchical and dynamic way, these are huge, huge movements where technology will have an impact and where money will be made. Obviously, at the beginning of all these trends, there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of, uh, okay, there's a lot of uh, cloud and, and confusion and so on. Same with SDN, same with cloud computing, same with all the trends. The definitions are not clear, but something is happening, and something is really happening here. All right, Jeff, you're with a growth company, right? A private company called Innovolt. I am. Why is the Internet of Things important to your business, or is it? Uh, to be frank, as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur, the Internet of Things is important to me personally because it draws a whole bunch of capital into a, a new sector. I mean, the, the, the reality is, is this is a logical step of what the Internet has become. We've talked about, you know, we've talked about uh, Internet 1.0, Internet 2.0, and then it became the cloud. You can't call it Internet anymore. I guess it's now called the cloud or whatever you're supposed to call it. And it's reaching and reaching out to, to, to better and better sectors. But the challenge was, is while it's reaching out, it was the less, until we've branded this, until big companies have come in and said, we want to chase after this thing, Internet of Things, uh, it's, it's difficult to attract the right amount of capital to it. It's difficult to attract, um, I'll say, big enterprise customers. It's difficult to attract talent from, um, from other companies to come join you. So even though I think today there's mass confusion about what the Internet of Things is, as an entrepreneur, I, I think there's massive opportunity in that chaos and confusion. I think uh, all the tools are there. There's tens of millions of devices already deployed. There's tons of services that can be sold. And while Cisco, which if I'm, in, if I'm wearing a Cisco shirt, I'm, very, I'm anxious about getting to standards, 
I don't have a Cisco shirt on. I'm at, you know, several orders of magnitude smaller than Cisco. So I'm actually loving the time of the chaos yeah. right now because in that chaos is opportunity and, and, and the ability to make some money. So I think there's great business opportunity right now outside of the standards-based things. But uh, Internet of Things, it's not this thing. It's the next logical step of, of providing access to all the devices in the world. All right, so now we also have Gene Wong, an uh, early stage uh, money time entrepreneur with a company called People Power now, right? Pete, right, Gene? Thanks, so John. Why are you in the Internet of Things or why are you on this panel? Because the Internet of Things is the next giant wave for the Internet. It is going to be a huge opportunity for all of us entrepreneurs who really want to take advantage of several trends. One is the shift in gravity towards mobility. We now all have these powerful computers that we carry around in our pockets or our pocketbooks every day. And what we want to do with these smartphones is we want to control the things around us. I use this thing every day from it wakes me up in the morning, it might be the last device I touch at night. These things are not only universal remote controllers for the Internet of Things, but they are bundles of sensors themselves. So you can take advantage of the gigantic proliferation of these the most popular consumer electronics device, turn it around and make it a critical foundation for the Internet of Things. And then the, there's this whole movement towards big data analytics. And the Internet of Things is ripe for convergence, for data analytics that makes sense of all of this gigantic terabytes streaming into the cloud and turning all of that data into actionable intelligence. So I believe that in the Internet of Things, we're going to see a future, and it may be a little ways off, and as a serial entrepreneur, I'm always a little early, but still, <laughs> we are talking every home, every building, every car, every city, every road, every bridge. This is every gigantic. Farm. Every, every farm, absolutely. And uh, I, I, I like what uh, Cisco and, and Flavio has been calling this. It's the Internet of Everything. Okay, so a couple interesting themes there. So in order to be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to actually get into a market ahead of the big guys. Um, when standards are there, there's no room for us people, those of us who invest in small companies or those of us who start small companies. So isn't it really a little late? Now that we already, then we've been talking about the Internet of Things for so long, and three major companies are running TV ads all the time about this thing, and we talking. Uh, they are talking, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of work to do to fill the talk. And I yeah. believe this is the time. The the problem is that the, mar the the consumers, the environment in which the Internet of Things and all the other names that confuse the same kind of concept. Uh, the, the, the verticals are difficult, uh, are not easy. Uh, they include service providers, utilities, governments, uh, things that move slowly, car, car companies, and so on. So it's not the most uh, attractive for a little company uh, because we are in a situation in which the VC structures are not helping with staying power, with patience, and so on. So the VCs are not somewhat in a position to really support these new initiatives. The big companies sometimes want, they should absorb these little companies early, but they tend to absorb bigger when they're mature, when they are already proven in the market. So there's a problem in between. There's a delicate situation that is difficult, but there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are seeing the future. What well, Gene is one of those. There's plenty of pioneers. They need to be helped. The issue is, how can we help this growing creative uh, situation there? But, so but so yeah. it's not a Silicon Valley panel until we blame VCs. So that's, that's good. So <laughs> happy Friday, everybody. We were there. We checked the box. So I guess you know, the other element, though, is timing, right? So mm -hmm. we've been talking about this for quite a few years. or I've been hearing about it for a long time. Um, what is the timing? Why is, why is this year different? So when, if somebody in the audience is here yeah. is thinking about you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop everything and I'm gonna mortgage my house and I'm gonna start to build something. 
or I'm gonna to start to develop a service, why yeah. is the time now? And well, that's, that's what makes great entrepreneurs, right? Figuring out when to it do is. it. It is, and I think, and, and timing's everything. You talk about, it's, you know, when you're, when you're surfing, there's only one time that she works. One is when you're gonna you know, wait for the, you know, one the wave's too early, one the wave's too late. Those aren't very exciting, but the one time that works. And right now, if you look at the bigger companies, again, IBM and Cisco and GE, and there aren't bigger ones out there. I mean, these guys, these guys own the market and will ultimately be the biggest providers of this. They're not the ones that are gonna create the next standard. The standard's gonna be created here in a place like this. I mean, the people in this audience and the people in audiences like this around the world or, or panelists like, like Gene are gonna create what that standard actually is, they're just gonna decide, they're gonna decide, they're gonna be the guys at the end and say that's the one. It was Gene's standard or it was Tom's standard, that's the one we're gonna go after, but it's gonna be created here because they've got the ability to actually sit back and look and actually buy the stuff that matters for them later on. And to, and to uh, Flavia's point, they're not gonna buy, they're not gonna go, and go after some small companies right now, they're not gonna go out and try to engineer everything themselves today. They have the capital, they've got the patience to actually wait for a coalescing of, of what the best standard is actually going to be. So back to that ecosystem, the small companies that are, are birthing the technologies and birthing those standards right now are the ones that stand to benefit from it. And the time is right now. You can't wait that much longer because now these companies are signaling to the marketplace, we're now interested, build great technology, and we will gobble you up. Right. Yep. When you're big enough. When you're big enough. So, so Gene, you, you jumped in f feet first, as you always do. What, what, is, what made you think the timing is now? So, again, the, the major enhancement in these mobile devices is really creating giant new opportunities, and I think it's very appropriate on this mobility track that we're on. One of the, uh, you know, as John knows, my, my last company, Bitphone, was serving uh, service providers. In fact, we, we sold to some of the largest, in fact, the largest, like China Mobile, was one of our flagship customers. And what this does at the end, actually, People Power is building something similar to what uh, our last company did. But the difference here is that with, uh, with People Power, we just launched a new app called Presence. And this is like launched less than two months ago and we are getting thousands of downloads a day. We're turning your old iPhone or I iOS device into a free security camera that you can instantly use as an Internet of Things device. And there are all of these things that you can hang off of this platform. So you can control your thermostat, your smart plugs, read your meter, do all kinds of useful things. And this is just kind of one vertical. There are hundreds of verticals, as, as Flavia was saying. There are tremendous opportunities, and I think a lot of it is enabled by these very capable smartphone devices that just turn the world upside down and make new opportunities available right now so what we talked about for decades, this is the time to really capitalize. So m distributed computing in the form of mobile, proliferate sensors, that's, that, those are catalysts that we see, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, what I think would really help developers or people that are thinking about at this industry, and certainly a reluctant investor like myself, is what are the problems um, that you think are not being addressed? What are the holes that you think that a, you know, a true innovator could actually contribute to actually a big, big return opportunity. I mean, you know, big company opportunity. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, problems to solve. One is when you look at, you know, today the uh, proliferation of, of internet connected devices actually in very consolidated environments typically. Your data centers, your, you know, your, uh, you know, corporate environments. That's where the devices are connected. And we have learned over the past several decades how to actually service and manage those devices in those environments. It's easy to do. I've got one guy who could manage tons of devices. He's very close. Now I take those devices and I put them all over the place. Right? They're in the ceiling. They're on top of light poles. They're in, in faraway places in the farms that Flavio was talking about or wherever it might be. And instantly that entire service architecture, the way you look at those things, it vanishes. It doesn't work anymore. So those are the types of things that have really got to be ferreted out in this process because just de by deploying new IP addresses, it doesn't mean that you're now, you know, Internet of Things is not, uh, 
is not free of all of the typical service and cost issues that are associated with running networks. Matter of fact, it's going to accelerate and, and uh, let's say, kind of explode them. Okay. And I, I, maybe if we go in order. No. Uh, so the point is very well taken here. Uh, communications. We are not done with networking for the Internet of Things. In fact, we know. We talk to the service providers. They know that they. <laughs> They can start from the cellular connectivity, but they cannot make money if they use the current infrastructure because it's too expensive to carry some of those messages. It's uh, not scaling, it's not responding, and so on. So they, they know there's a new infrastructure coming and new technologies for connecting these uh, sensors and devices in a more efficient way than cellular. You know, low power, wireless is important. Uh, over power line is important in some cases, Wi-Fi and uh, you know technology that Gene has been pioneering as well. Ad hoc, not always connected, on and off, delay tolerant. All these model of communication, by the way, the defense industry sometimes used uh, effectively, uh, but is not being in the common use, have to come into play. So com networking has a lot of future, as the end will play a role here. But the other element is distribution of the resources and management of this computation and storage that is out in the streets, down in the ocean, and so on. So getting out of the data centers, out of the big clouds, and being present on the roadside, on the bus, on the train, and so on, in a model very similar to the cloud. And the other big one is security. Now, now lives are at stake. You can kill a, a guy on the car. You can destroy, you know, block the, uh, the, the smart grid, the energy grid. So security here is not only the security of networking, but the security of systems. Intrusion into the poles and taking data out of that or making a mess out of it. So security is an area of great innovation needed. Communication, distributed systems. There's a lot of good work for engineering uh, ahead of us. Okay. So Gene, I, I, you're, you have a different angle, right? So you, you're building a more consumer-focused business, right? And what we've just talked about was more enterprise-focused, so maybe you could give a different perspective. Yeah, I think in terms of the getting normal, everyday consumers to really engage with the Internet of Things requires a beautiful user experience, it requires really simple to install systems that can be do-it-yourself. It requires very low cost and it requires something that is interoperable across multiple devices. Um, I think to enable this, what we need also is developer tools and a develop an open developer platform and people need to approach this from a perspective of open APIs, open cloud services, and you know the fact that we have multiple network protocols, well, that's going to be the way it is in the Internet of Things. It's not going to be just one protocol solves every problem, so we're going to have to interconnect, interwork, interoperate, and for that we're going to need great developer tools. Now back to John's point though, I like to summarize this as something uh, that is Simple, easy experience for you, or sexy for short. So we need to build something really sexy that will engage the end user, make them interested, give them something that connects them to what they really care about, and that's how it's going to take off. It always comes down to sex with you. Always it? gets <laughs> down right. to sex, yeah. that's right. So Jeff, so, you're, so you, what you talked about earlier was really uh, Bring, bring, extending the service management infrastructure and gr bring greater efficiencies out in the field. What are other opportunities? What other green field opportunities do you see out there that aren't being addressed? Oh, there's, I mean, there's uh, an enormous number of them. When you talk about the, uh, what, the, the similarities obviously to the dot-com boom are, are, are obviously very, you know, they're very tangible. But I would say that there is, such an enormous uplift on this opportunity versus the dot-com boom. So all the things that we were attempting to build, all the applications and all the things that people wanted to build back in the late 90s, the reality was they were always hamstrung by connectivity. That was their biggest issue. Um, it's not an issue anymore. 
I mean, we've got we have, we have mobile applications are out there. We have we have the, the ability to, uh, to to reach different spots and whatnot. So the opportunities today is are really in um, not trying to define what that standard is yet. That's that's going to be up to Flavio and, and his, his team. But it's really saying what are those new attachment technologies? What are the new the new industries that have, that have yet to be connected to the grid? I'm going to be the leader in that space. How do we how do we build applications that fit certain verticals? don't need to boil the ocean. There are you know, tens of thousands of entrepreneurial ideas just in trying to solve HVAC issues or trying to, trying to you know, do things that are very, very focused on a in certain industry because the transport mechanisms are there. To, G to Gene's point, all the technology is there to do it. But it's just, there are just, I mean, too many opportunities that you lay out right now. Okay. How about, how about in terms of geog geographic focus? Where, where's, the, where's the leading edge of this market? Where, where would I look if I'm trying to find <laughs> so the hottest, hottest engineers in this category? Our hottest, Europe uh, has a lot of uh, good teams, pioneering teams that are kind of a little stranded because the VC world there is not as active. The, 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 uh, the nasty VCs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, they are not there. I'm saying they are missing there. But uh, there is a lot of teams we see that are very creative, very pioneering out of that. Uh, and, and there's a lot of effort in the European community to fund research through the joint projects. The other area that is very active is China. There's a, a lot on transportation, a lot of an, an, on the environmental monitoring, water and so on, real critical syst uh, systems. There's a lot of activity there and obviously a lot of people working on that. Uh, we should really bring the interest to the people here. And I think that uh, going beyond the social networking focus into even using some of the same technologies, applications to solve problems that touch lives, that save lives, even you know, with the current infrastructure, that is a big thing. And as the infrastructure grows, the uh, opportunity to develop an application ecosystem for these uses is even more important. I saw an old guy, very nice guy, that told me never retire. He was 85 and he was a CEO of a company with a little gadget attached to the watering system in, his ha in the house. Through the web he would find out when it was the time to turn off the watering in the house. 25 percent saving in water. That little gadget. That is a creative application that many people can come up with because it had a little modem and had a website and so on. So those type of applications, we can start now. The ecosystem should develop now and we should find ways to monetize. And Gene is at the pioneering edge of that. And I like your application. <laughs> I'll use I'll use your application when I'm in Europe to monitor my chickens in the backyard. Ah, thank you, Flavio. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you know, TICON is such an international conference. It's, it's, it's so exciting. I think we have people from all around the world. And as, as, as Flavio is just saying, you can really start with this cool stuff. And I'm sure we're going to see innovation from around the world, you know, in Silicon Valley and everywhere. I think there are definitely some geographic differences that, uh, that, that we've seen, um, you know, for example, here in the U.S., there is a big concentration on, on things like home security. Um, you know, it's a $31 billion industry, and, you know, the, the security systems are so ridiculously expensive that there's a ripe opportunity to disrupt that in Europe. They don't really care as much about security. They're very much into energy efficiency and, you know, being able to actually uh, preserve the planet that we live on and come up with a great value proposition like that. I think in China they're doing all kinds of stuff and they have, they have major, uh, you know, major initiatives ongoing there. And then, uh, and then in Japan with that whole tsunami thing and the, the shutting down of all these nuclear reactors and so on, I mean there's just so much opportunity. So I think it's I think it's really going to be a global phenomenon that drives forward this next generation of the internet. Okay, but the one thing we have here is we have exits. So uh, if looking at it as, a, as an investor, when, when can I expect to start to see exits and, and who, who are going to be the acquirers, the natural acquirers in this ecosystem? 
because that's what drives entrepreneurs and that's what, why people invest in entrepreneurs. That, that's the reason, the reason we get in these businesses is for, <laughs> for exactly that reason. You know, so you, know, you, it's, you are you're going to spend money you don't have, you're going to spend time you don't necessarily have, and you're, you're searching for some sort of exit or, or whatever it might be. The ability to license your technology into somebody or to be able to sell your business into those, into those businesses. And again, there's, you know, you're looking for those buy signs out in the market. And earlier, I don't look at the, the advertisements of the Internet of Things being the, being the bell of, oh, we missed the wave. I think that's actually the bell of the wave's coming. The wave's coming. You're getting to get into this market. That's a commitment. It's a solid commitment by these companies. When you sit on the analyst calls, and I've sit on the analyst calls for companies like Cisco and, and GE and Johnson Controls and these guys, the reality is that they are using these things and they're actually raising capital. They're they're they're, they're talking to their analysts and their and their uh, their um, shareholders about these things. They're not moving away from it. So get in front of that train. Get in front of it quickly. So maybe we could just drill down a little bit. So if I'm starting a company. Uh, where sh where should I focus? Should I focus on the device? Should I focus on the on there's the software? Where, where what are you saying? There's many dimensions. Uh, the infrastructure is not there. The platform is not fully there, and so there's a lot of elements that are platform: uh, distributed computing, uh, communications that are more efficient uh, for connecting cars between cars and 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 uh, transportation and so on. But then there will be applications. But the other element is also the, the big data. In fact, we are already seeing the excitement of uh, uh, Pivot P Pivotal and GE. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been investing in some of those areas. We acquired a company that is in the train space recently. It's small, maybe not making not lots of noise. The point is, a lot of these companies are small, and you might not see the big uh, splash of, of, uh, of billions, but they are Everybody's active. GE is active. We are active. Intel is active, and so forth. And, and what was it? What, what was sort of driving that acquisition? What, what was the what was the need that you that Cisco felt for that acquisition? There's each large company has a lot of holes in their strategy. Uh, you know, I can say it openly. We all know large companies are not as good at developing internally, and they are going out for quick acceleration of go-to-market. In some areas, we are not familiar with what is needed. You know, Cisco is a networking company, and we don't know a lot about data and big data. And big data is fundamental in this story, uh, as well as computing, as well as storage distributed, as well as uh, distributed systems and so on, beyond computing, beyond networking. So we all need to evolve and, and, and change our cultures, so we are bringing what is missing in. So the holes are pretty large in every large company, and there will be uh, ways to fill those holes. Great. Jeff, so one last question for you. So how do you, do, how do you, def how do you define the applications in such a broad space? How do you go about doing that? Uh, you, you really don't, unfortunately. I mean, it, it is a broad space, and the applications are really going to mimic the applications that existed in every other um, proliferation of IP data. So. Um, just like we've evolved from the standard desktop applications to mobile apps and whatnot, there's, um, we're going to have a whole brand of, of different types of uh, material and, um, and uh, I'll say different types of applications that are going to apply to the sector. But you just got to just pour a little bit of money at it, put a bunch of smart people on it, and uh, continue to monitor it. Water the ones that work, discard the ones that don't, and hopefully the guys like Flavio can come up and make it worth your while. Okay, we just have time for one question for Gene. So, Gene, what's your prediction? When when does this come to fruition? When do we see when it's, when does this become so obvious that there's you know billions of dollars to be made in the Internet of Things? Say now, Gene. <laughs> well, you know, I think right now is the time to jump in. And according to a lot of a lot of people, we're talking about growing from you know five to fifty billion devices by the end of 2020. So this is the perfect time to jump in, go for it, make a lot of money. There's, there's opportunities in components, there's opportunities in devices, there's opportunities in apps, there's opportunities in services, there's opportunities to really transform the meaning of the internet to something much larger that pulls us all together. Okay, we're over our time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.